Hey guys, um, update on the pruno I've been making. This is what it looks like. Uh, pretty much it's been fermenting for about four days now. And if you look carefully, I don't know if you could see it, but there's bubbles um, coming up. Uh, it pretty much stopped. So there used to be a ton of bubbles. I would have to wake up in the middle of the night to kind of let the, the air out and then close it up again. Because um, apparently yeast doesn't work well with oxygen. Uh, and I'll show you the bag where I had it. So the whole time the pruno was right here. In this biohazard bag. And what I did was um, wrap it in this towel so that the yeast could grow in the dark. And um, so now what we have to do is pretty much filter this out um, into this trash can, which is pretty disgusting. It's not clean by any means. Um, I don't know how to show you. But you see all those stains. And if you look at it in person, like right there, it's it's pretty nasty. So to get around that, I'm covering the inside with this bag. Okay, and I'm using um, the shirt as a filter because this is the only waterproof thing I have, <laughs> I think. So, wish me luck. I'm just gonna put a little dent in it and then pour the pruno on it and hopefully, hopefully it works like I think it will. It really doesn't smell bad. Like, it looks disgusting. Uh, I don't know how to show you. <laughs> it looks disgusting. But it actually smells really good. I put um, oranges, bananas, grapes, and pineapple. And uh, also some, like, juices. Uh, apple juice orange juice, mango juice, pineapple juice, and it smells like a fruit smoothie with alcohol. It smells like you put either vodka in a fruit smoothie or some sort of citrus. Anyways, oh my God, I don't want it to go to waste. Okay. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really. Okay, that's kind of what I was afraid was going to happen. Um, so unfiltered Pruno got in, but fuck it. I'll just keep going. Ah. If you have a better method. Leave it in the comments below, I guess. Fuck. <laughs> Fucking hell. Okay. Okay. That didn't work. Um. That did not work. Good news, all the prunos in one spot. Oh, even better news, all the pruno is in the shirt, so we can just strain it now. Okay, uh, actually no, there's still big chunks of pruno at the bottom. But I think that's a risk we're gonna have to take. So this smells like, um, Right now it smells like maybe like artisanal beer, kind of like Blue Moon, but with more mango and um, pineapple, not just orange. Okay. 
And also found out that uh, the bread I put in actually doesn't have that much yeast. Um, I actually put in an onion peel and a banana peel about a day after I put the pruno in, or the day after I started the pruno, and that that's when it actually started. Uh, the fermentation kicked up much faster, and because there's a yeast on natural growing yeast on a fruit peel for some reason, uh, bread has yeast when before you start baking, but apparently oh shit. Apparently the yeast starts dying at a temperature that is lower than the temperature of baking, so 99.9% .9 of the yeast. Eastern bread is already... It's actually taking a while. It's um, coming out at a very slow rate. Um, as I was saying, two things people were warning me about throughout this was... um botulism and methanol um, apparently botulism is some kind of bacteria that can kill you has a 5% fatality rate but that's after you get it you know so what are the chances I get it um, apparently it grows in non acidic uh, environments and my Concoction is pretty acidic, so I'm hoping I don't get botulism. Uh, another thing was the methanol. Um, apparently, that only happens when you're distilling stuff. I'm not using any fire or any uh, heat, so shouldn't be any problems there. Methanol causes blindness and possibly death, but I think we're I think we're good. Okay. Uh, I see if it's good. I don't want it to go to waste, so I'm gonna put in the extra effort here and probably edit this out on YouTube. Okay, I think that's it. I think what's left in here is just um, it's just foam and useless stuff. Like if I squeeze it. There's more. Okay, I think that's it. Um, even if there's more, I don't want to bother. Uh, let's see what it looks like inside. Okay. So this is the shirt. Uh, that's what's on the inside. And it is, it's sticky. It feels like butter. These are the grapes I put in for uh, the yeast on the outside of grapes too. Grapes, if you just mash and let them sit by themselves, they have yeast and sugar, so they'll just ferment themselves. This, I don't think you guys can see it with the lighting. Let me bring this. Ta-da. Okay, yeah, it looks disgusting. Kind of looks like um pineapple smoothie. <laughs> this is the volume I have. Um, enough to fill maybe a cup, cup and a half. Well, let's try it. I'm pretty nervous. Uh. 
Uh, cheers. Cover all 9,000 taste bud. Aerate it. Warm it up. Driving up that top note. That cream. Pure vanilla. It tastes like you just mashed a lot of fruit and put like um, maybe a shot of vodka in the whole cup. Definitely alcoholic. Maybe not a shot, maybe half a shot. It tastes definitely um, weaker than beer, so maybe three or four, three or four percent. But uh, I haven't drank in, um, over over two weeks, I think. So, I'm I'm feeling the alcohol from just those sips. Yeah, not bad. I don't know if I'll drink the whole thing though. <laughs> Why not? You know. All right, well, that's it for this video, I guess. Um, this is a new low for me. <laughs> but it was very interesting to try distilling, not distilling, fermenting my own alcohol the first time. Um, really cool process. Thank you guys for watching. Um, thanks for all the support I got, which was, did not expect that much support for quarantine and this whole thing so that's really cool thank you guys and 